Hello, my name is Rebecca Metzger. I am the school counselor for Lakeland Primary School. This will be my, the 2021 school year will be my ninth school year. Um, I was the school counselor at Lima Brighton for seven years. And then when we had the consolidation, I moved over to Lakeland Primary. So this will act, the 2021 school year will be my second year as Lakeland Primary. Um, so I went down from K-5 to a K-2. So I definitely enjoy the K-2. I like both age groups, the K-2 and the 3-5 for different reasons. But um, I think I like the K-2 just, uh, there's something about them that just is kind of just melts my heart. Um, so my job is very, very broad. Um, I work with all of the kids. I'm not like a classroom teacher. I don't have just one uh, classroom. I work with all of them. and. Because of that, I have character lessons, monthly lessons that I work with students. Um, so I will schedule a time with teachers and then I will go in and I take over the classroom for a little bit and they become my students um, for that little bit. I do that once a month. Um, I'm required by law to provide two different lessons. One is a lesson about bullying, what it looks like, what it isn't, how to stop it by October 15th, so I do that with all of the students. I also have to provide a body safety lesson by December 15th. So in that lesson, I, um, I show kids some very uh, simple videos about what it means for something to be private, the different areas of our body that say private, what it looks like when people are trying to push past that boundary and what they can do and who they need to go to. It's very basic. Um, doesn't go into any a lot of detail. Um, it's actually based from Barbara Sinatra Foundation. So I, I have to do that by December 15th. But the rest of my, my lessons are like about different character traits, um, different life skills, lifelines, um, and if I have enough time, hopefully getting to career. I didn't really get to get career with the kindergartners this year because of obviously you guys understand. Um, so another thing that I kind of started doing last year is we, I started doing life skill videos. So we'd have a different life skill of the week. I think we're actually going to just move to lifelines of the month. So sending out videos like every week so the teachers can show the students emphasizing the lifeline. Um, it's another way that the kids can see my face and then I get to do some teaching without me coming into the classroom. And so the teachers just show that to the students. Um, the kids really seem to enjoy that so I do that uh, many times we have teachers have to leave maybe a little bit early for an appointment or we don't have subs that come in uh, I sub for the kids many times which is a lot of fun I have I have my master's in counseling but I also with that I have to, have to as a school counselor I have to have a teaching certificate so I have my teaching certificate certificate through the state of Indiana as well um, so I do subby many times. It's another way for me to get to know the kids. I I also work with attendance. Um, many times, um, you know, if kids miss, they'll get, you guys will get an all call saying, the kid isn't here. Can you give us a call? Tell us what's going on. And I mean, usually that's pretty basic. But once a, a child hits a certain point, um, like five or ten, uh, you might get contacted by myself or Dr. Blaze being like, we missed the student, what's going on? Is there anything that we can do to help? Because we, the kids have to be in school 180 days. Uh, and let's say they missed 10 days. That's, for 180 days, that's, that's a significant chunk of time. And that's a significant chunk of curriculum that the students missed out on. And getting them up to school, getting them to come to school is, is, our way of teaching them how to be responsible, how to to do what they need to do. You know, as they get older, um, going to school is going to be part of their life for the next few years. Then they graduate from high school. We want them to get a job, be productive citizens. But you got to start that practice of getting up out of bed, getting ready, going to school. And most people don't want to get up out of bed. So it's something that we have to teach our children to do. Um, and so that's another, and that's another thing that I uh, that can be a struggle sometimes. 
especially for kindergartners, that first day, that first week, um, it's can be kind of hard for students and it can be hard for parents of kindergartners. I had, my son started, was in kindergarten last year, so I completely understand. Uh, I would recommend we have open house night in August. Come with your students, walk around with them, meet the teachers, go into their classroom, walk around the building, get to know the staff. That's really important. But come school, that first day, that second day, that first week, second week, you can walk them to the door, you know, drop them off at the curb, and let us take them from that point. Um, the kids need to start learning that they can trust us. Um, trust me, we understand how important your kids are and how important they are to you. Your children are your world. I know that fully well. Um, and we all, once they become Lakers, they're, they become they kind of take over our heart, I guess. They, they're they important to us. We do the best that we can to make sure that they're safe, that they're learning, that we can help them as much as they can. Once they come into the building, we take our responsibility to protect them and to, to um, help them very seriously. We all do, and we're all good at what we do. So I really, really would recommend just letting coming to the door and letting us take them from there. We can walk them to their class. We can kind of, and there's going to be some tears. I can promise you, but that's okay. Uh, the kids, if you, if you show the kids that you trust us, the kids are going to learn that they can trust us. And that's very important. Um, I also work with, we have the MTSS that we do, which multi-tiered systems of support, just a fancy name for a way that we help kids. Uh, so I, I'm part of that team. We, we meet with a whole bunch of different staff members on how we can help different kids with the different things that they might be struggling with. And sometimes it might be attention issues. Sometimes it might be like academic issues. Sometimes it might be um, just different issues. And I do screenings for some of those. Uh, and if we do that, permissions always get sent home. I try to call. I try to communicate with parents what's going on. So, but I also do that. Uh, I do group counseling. Uh, I set a schedule. I'm not really sure. It kind of just pops up as the year goes on. And uh, like what we talk about, we kind of try to get different students have similar struggles. Uh, individual counseling. I will talk to students if if a parent is concerned or we found out something happened with a student or a student's family and I will talk to the student try to figure out what's going on try to help them with their feelings and their thoughts and their emotions but long-term intense counseling can is not part of my my job description um, that's usually consisting of a 50-minute session once a week and that is not within my schedule to to um to provide we have last year we had over th we had 330 some students and we have the students for seven hours a day five days a week and I think you guys can understand where I just can't provide that for for just like a handful of students and not meet the needs of the rest of the students so if you want me to talk to your student about something that pops up I will most definitely do that but if you want more long-term counseling, then the Bowen Center provides two free services. The Northeastern Center provides two free services for Lakeland students. And I have information from numerous other agencies that I can provide to you. Uh, one thing that happened last year is that the grief a grief group came in um, and they provided some support for students who had lost somebody. And it wasn't me running them. It was an outside organi organization. That, that's what they specialized in. And so if you, any of your students have suffered a significant loss of a person, um, you can let me know. I can get them put on a list, hoping that they'll come back. And that um, if that if they do come, um, permission always is, is asked by parents. I just want you guys to know my, I really do try to communicate as much as I can with, with parents and uh, my job is to bridge sometimes the communication between parents and students. Um, sometimes you're trying to figure out what's going on and the student's not opening up. Maybe I can't and then I try to convey that back to you or get the student to convey how they're feeling because that's very important. 
Um, it's if you guys will look behind me, you'll see these are called I Care Cat Rules. Um, it's by Peace Works Education. Um, my first year in counseling, we we took on this um, curriculum, and I've just really loved it ever since. So I really I introduce it with my kindergartners. So this is I Care Cat. The kids love I Care Cat. They love him, love him, love him. I always bring in a stuffed animal. If the kids can prove to me that they can do the right thing and they can listen well, I will let them get hugs from my stuffed animal. So the kindergartners always love when I bring I Care Cat. And so I just kind of wanted to go over my I Care Cat rules with you just so you can maybe understand what the kids are going to be bringing home, like papers and that this is kind of the the root of what I want our kindergartners to learn um, in in relation to character and friendship and school. So our first one is we listen to each other and then hands are for helping, not hurting. We use I care language. We care about each other's feelings and we're responsible for what we say and do. So I just wanted you guys to be familiar with those. Um, so these I start these very like in the beginning trying to teach these kindergartners that and since I teach it to them in kindergarten the first graders know it the second graders know it and so sometimes kids just need to be a reminder I'm like hmm what are our hands for helping not hurting do we listen to each other yes so I use that a lot when I'm talking to kids about like remember hands are for helping not hurting um so but I got to tell you, I'm very excited about meeting our new little Lakers, and I look forward to getting to know the little ones. Sometimes it takes me a couple weeks to get to know their names and um, a little bit more information about them, but that's kind of part of my job that I really enjoy. It's really important for me to know the kids' names because when they walk in, I can say their name, I can say hello, so they feel, they feel known, they feel safe, they feel like they belong. That's very important to me and all of the of the people that I work with in Lakeland Primary because we want the kids to feel like they belong in, in our school, and they do. So once again, I look forward to meeting your little Lakers. So have a good rest of the evening.